Today is a big day. I had to relieve some energy playing the drums. Today is the day where you can listen to Watch Me Burn. For me, it's still not out, but by the time this video is out, it's out. Very excited. I've worked long on this song. It's a collaboration with Nikita, a singer-songwriter, very talented, amazing vocal, deep, melancholic. It just all fits together and I think it works. And I hope you will also like it. It's linked down below in the description if you want to listen to the full song and enjoy it. Today's video is all about me in the upstairs studio, explaining you every single little detail of that song and showing you exactly how it was made. First up, uh, the vocal. I think I got it like one and a half years ago. That's at least the first time I heard it. Then a little back and forth with the singer-songwriter. If you're interested in what she's else doing or want to get in touch to get vocals, I'll link her Instagram down below. She did an amazing job. I'm very happy with the result. And then the rest was just me building an instrumental around it and then a little re-recording of some parts and construct the entire song right there in Logic. So that's the entire project. I haven't opened it in a while, 56 tracks. One of them is the master. Let's just start at the very top. Um, we got here a kick drum, very simple, four to the floor. The kick was made with uh, Kick2. Very nice plugin to shape your own kicks and really have full control over every little bit in your kick. You can layer clicks, you can make it shorter or longer, have more attack, less attack, change the pitch of it, everything possible. And then I tried out OTT on it and DS10 drum, which is actually really nice, but I decided to leave it as it is. It just sounded nicer in the mix. The next major part, definitely the bass. I divided it up into a sub bass and top bass. Let's just listen to kick and sub bass. It's actually already quite fuzzy for a sub bass, but I actually needed something to cut through a little on here. Or actually, let's first start with uh, Diva. That's how it was made. Those are the settings in Diva. The cutoff is, is being automated throughout the entire song. Actually, not. <laughs> it's been automated on the second bass layer. We'll check that out in a very bit. Um, OGT on there, just a hint. Decapitator, like all of that gives it that crunch. Compressor, just a hint. A gain plugin. I sometimes have this when I, I start like doing all of the volume and I don't want to change the volume on, on the volume fader because it's already been automated. I just put a gain plugin on there to be able to change all of it at once. And then of course LFO tool to sidechain it. Let's listen maybe to the bass with all of the plugins and without. Not a huge difference, just like volume and crunch. And then the top layer. That is like 90% responsible for, for the stereo. Cause I was like the, the, the sub one is actually also a main one cause it's that crunchy. Um, was actually like enough to fill out the very low frequencies and the, the higher ones you hear on smaller speakers. But um, I was missing stereo in a way because this song is quite minimal there's just like kick bass and arpeggiator at least at this section of the song and i wanted the bass to be just a little wider so i think yeah this one is omnisphere and i i controlled it quite a lot like cut away the low end that's not necessary and also the the top end wasn't really something i needed in there at certain sections i think that's what i automated yes cut off on the second layer yes right so on, on the drop, it's less throughout the song. It increases and opens up the cutoff. Just to have like movement in the song, make it interesting, emphasize um, like switches from one section of a song to another. Then the main, main, main thing of the entire song is like the main lead synthesizer sound. That's this one right here. It plays a very, very simple melody right here. Yeah. 
And for this one, it was very important to have the space in between, to not play it throughout, because it has so much delay on top, so much reverb, it actually needs like breathing space in between. And it also makes the kick um, breathe a little in between. I really like this kind of call and response kind of way of doing things. Um, here we don't have like something that actually responds to it. It's then just like the emptiness and the delay and reverb, which again makes it more interesting once it hits again. Um, this sound is also Diva. Back then uh, I had a lot less synthesizers, uh, so it's mostly in the box. Cut off fully open, of course. And then it's mostly about uh, the, the processing on it. OTT helps a lot to make like the reverb um, jump out because I actually use the delay and reverb in the plugin, in the synthesizer, in Diva, which I usually hate to do because I don't like the quality of them that much. And there's not that much you can change about them. But having OTT afterwards, like it, it pushes all of it up. Um, then just an EQ to cut away the low end, decapitator for the crunch again, and a hint of LFO, actually not a hint, a ton of LFO to, to still make the kick shine through, and the gain again is just like in the last mixing stage to get the volumes up or down. Um, yeah, but here without any processing. <laughs> It's quite dramatic, it's quite extreme, but if you want something to be a lead, it needs to do a lot and, and cover a whole lot of frequencies, have a lot of movement in there. And I think it works. So, um, so far we got like kick, bass, main lead synthesizer sound. Let's maybe play the section for you. That's the, the entrance to the drop. So watch me for And I added a couple of layers in the last stage of finishing up the song, um, like a small arpeggiator. You might not even be able to really hear it. It's just a glitter sparkle. And also this audio right here, I recorded it with the Moog right here. It's just a noise. I could have made it in the computer, but I just like to like, turn the knob and record it and this way have again more movement. I'm really lazy when it comes to automation. I, I don't know, I just don't like like clicking there and moving things. It's way more fun to do it with a knob. It's really just noise, making it longer, cut off open. Um, very simple, very subtle in the background. Then the second section um, has basically like kick, bass, same elements the plug or actually let's maybe do the effect in between i think that's maybe the most interesting it's that little sound right here uh, i've also done it in another song it's like the secret to do it um it's basically just like a standard plugged arp kind of sound On 164th, uh, I sometimes even automate um, the rate from slow to fast to make it even more dramatic. Here, this wasn't really necessary. I like to have these little small ear candy kind of effect things you do yourself. The rest, the transition um, sound is just the, the vocal. It's reversed. And then the third one is again the vocal on one. And this way you transition really nicely between like the main drop and then again like the, the let's call it verse, second verse kind of part. The main part in this section is just like a ARP, very plucked. Um, we still have that noise going on from the MOOC. Um, and then, of course, the vocal, the plug right here is also just um, all cables everywhere, ACE. Very nice, um, modular, semi-modular synth. 
and just like a standard plug. There is again a ton of stuff on there, but it's all like subtle. And I use track spacer to sidechain it at certain sections when the vocal is actually playing so that the plug and the vocal don't interfere that much. And then later on a second plug is introduced because um, the first one I tried opening the cutoff and, and adding stuff, but it just didn't feel right. So I added the second layer and that second layer is actually taking care of the, the cutoff um, going in there. It really adds resonance and like sparkle again and bite and that's actually quite important to again have movement in there and leading up to the to the next big part of the song which is then the breakdown. Uh, I think this one right here is uh, just a logic alchemy. I don't know like it's way too long like I don't know when I did it. Um, I probably flicked through presets found something that I like and then um, probably saved it. I usually have the habit of saving sounds that I like to reuse them as a starting point and this way develop more like your own stuff than just always starting with someone else's preset. For some reason, I decided to record another ARB in the MOOC. You can't really hear it. I don't know why I did it. Probably I just wanted to use the synthesizer. It was back then new. Yeah, it adds. Like a little dreamy texture, but it's definitely not so important. Then the main part of the entire song actually is the vocal. Um, let's listen to this one right here. Spread my wings and fly around the gate. And the vocal was um, is always the most work. Um, this one was also quite a lot of work. A lot of like the breathing, I did it manually, just automating it got more control. I tried using a plugin that does it automatically, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do. And the main issue of the vocal was actually um, that this was recorded in another studio and uh, the engineer added reverb and delay. And I think the original file got lost. So all we had left was the file with the reverb and delay. So I didn't have a whole lot of control of it and had to work around it slightly. Spread my wings and fly throughout the gaze. Yeah, like doing DSing, getting rid of clicks, um, the breathing, all of it is, is a lot harder to pull off when there's already delay and reverb on top. Um, so you can, if you listen really closely to the original song, you can sometimes hear these dips where I like excluded the breathing. You can hear that the delay and reverb also is muted. I try to mask it a lot. Sometimes in songs, there are just things um, where you can't get around and then you just try and do the best possible. A little more automation here. And then the, the processing on the vocal, again, it already had like delay and reverb. So um, I use Nectar to do a little bit of EQing and DSing, which was again hard, also EQing. Um, Soothe to try to DS certain frequencies. Um, then we got RX D click. I sometimes just throw it on there and, and hope that it removes all of the clicks. Usually it doesn't. I still have to go in there and do some manually, but in this case it removed like quite a few. And Spectra right here is something I absolutely love. It's like an EQ that gives you saturation and certain bands and certain types of saturation. So I use that on the vocal on the top end just to just to give it some warmth and some edge and like make it cut through the mix a little more. By the way, that's the processing on the vocal group. Um, there's a little more on in the individual parts. Um, channel IQ, Soothe again. I, I tried to do like certain frequencies and certain sections and also the DSR by Logic to try to catch like other parts of certain syllables. Um, it's usually the most work to make the vocal sound like equal in a way. Nothing popping out. Um, it's hard to get under control, but that's totally normal. The human voice is very inconsistent. Um, and I also added a, a reverb, yes, on top of the other reverb but it's mostly automated and for like gluing things together kind of reasons. Let's see what else we got. I think some of the facts were interesting. I think I already shared it. I think I even shared the day where I made them. 
I did a little bit of field recording, just again to have some unique uh, and my own kind of effects. I think this one right here, let's see if it's the one. Okay, I don't know why it's named clap, but it's not a clap, that's field recorded. It's a saw, actually. It helps, it does what it's supposed to do, and it's mixed with the white noise to like, make sure you don't really hear that it's a saw. I think that would throw someone off of listening to the song. Um, and all together, like that's the, the main section before the second drop, where everything leads up to the second drop. And then, like a, a quite simple transition to the main drop, um, I actually like to not make it so extra, extra big, so the drop actually convinces more. I don't like when the build up to the drop is bigger than the drop itself, um, especially for like a moodier track as this one. And uh, the effect that is going on before the drop is actually just like uh, a pitch down version. Uh, let me see where, where I have the automation of it, the original automation. I don't know, it's not really playing, um, but here, this is a section, it's a pad um, done with the Jupiter, and it's just like pitching down the very end of the of the pad, which I think gives it like a cool effect. Um, I then bounce it out to audio to be able to cut it and have like a, a hard stop before actually the drop hits. <laughs> And then the second drop, same thing, like the, the pitch down. And like to give it a little more, like something that is interesting, pitching it up really quick. And then you have this like stop, start kind of sound. Now let's listen to it all together. There is a lot of delay. In the last drop, it's just like more, more stuff that is in there, which was quite hard to mix. Uh, so I use um, quite a lot of automation, I think, or did I actually, no. I use some um, track spacer. Again, I have like an ARP in here just to have something extra in the last drop. I think it's the same sound as that little effect sound, also here in ARP with like 64th. It's so fast that it already sounds like one mushy kind of sound, but it, it gives it a little like speed for, for the last drop. added vocal chops to make it a little more hectic, just to have like, again, the last drop, the fullest and, and the most exciting one. Um, let's see what else. Then just the vocal repeated, some small effects in here. Drums are pretty basic. Standard four to the floor kind of drum beat. Very simple. You should be able to do this. Um, then we got a little more like field recorded stuff. I think one of them is me like actually exiting the car or starting the car. Yeah, that's like the engine sound plus the vocal reversed a little. I don't even know what I recorded there, but it's it's in there. And it gives like the start of the song a very organic kind of feel. I actually like that. Otherwise, it sounds very empty. Other people um, use like, I don't know, vinyl crackles or like some other sort of form of noise. I just use this like engine kind of humming thing. And I think there's more. Oh yeah, there are like chains in there. I bet you won't be able to hear it in the final song, but it's in there. It's, it's like 
gives it like a little groove before um, the second section of the intro. So yeah, basically that's the entire song. Um, quite simple, but I love simple songs. Getting to that simple solution and make everything work usually takes quite a long time. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to listen to the full song, go check it out. I'll link down below in the description. And a huge thanks to Nikita for the amazing vocal. Huge thanks to the entire team of Lost Frequencies and his label Found Frequencies for releasing this song, supporting me, supporting Nikita, a bunch of other artists, everyone involved. Huge thanks. Tomorrow, back again here in the studio, making new songs.